Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So I'm very excited for this one because I have been collecting a couple new supplies um, to play with. Now, um, one thing that many of you, most of you, probably all of you, don't know is that I'm actually terrified of sketchbooks. And <laughs> I know it sounds really dumb being an artist and being like not wanting to draw or paint in a sketchbook, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to force myself to experiment and play with the sketchbook to get over my fear of the blank page. So to do that, I purchased this mixed media Strathmore sketchbook and I saw that Lee Exington, Lexington, I can't pronounce your last name, sorry, um, but she's another YouTuber artist and I actually really love all her stuff. It's very cute and I have bought a couple of her stickers, bunny stickers of course. And I saw in one of her videos that this was her, like, new favorite sketchbook. Now, I've used Strathmore sketchbooks before, but not the mixed media one. I've used the Strathmore mixed media paper in a separate pad, um, paper pad, and I really liked it. So I decided, well, what the heck, I'll get this nice soft cover, cover notebook mixed media and fill it up. So my goal in the next couple months... I should make it shorter than that. I'll work on what time frame. I want to fill this sketchbook, but... So that is going to be a new project. And since this is a mixed media sketchbook, I've got to have some mixed media. So I went ahead and bought a 24 Arteza gouache set. Hope I said that right. Now I've been um, following a lot of Arteza products lately uh, a lot of youtubers have been sponsored by them um, and I know they have some a variety of products um, but I've really been wanting to try gouache and I have a couple colors of gouache that I occasionally use for watercolor paintings but I'm not experienced with it and I don't even think I'm using it right so I decided to get this set pretty inexpensive very affordable um, but it got very good reviews so this is just a little color chart on the back and I just also decided that it was time to get a couple more brushes. And these are just simple acrylic white nylon synthetic brushes from Michaels. Now I have actually used these before. I have the brown acrylic ones that were like my very first brushes that I used for watercolor. And I um, really like these brushes actually for the price, for how cheap they are. Um, they're actually pretty nice. So I got this little multi-pack. I think I paid about 10 bucks. It's about a dollar brush. Um, very good deal. I got it on sale. And there's some flats in here, some rounds. Looks like might be a mini round. Yeah, I think it's just a small round. So that will be fun. I thought that if I'm going to get a new medium, a new paint, that I should get a couple new brushes too. And I just needed some more. I needed a couple more, like, flats. So I'm going to be playing with some swatches and might do a swatch in the first page of the sketchbook to kind of break it in. I really, really like this paper. So let's get started. So the palette I'm gonna be using for my gouache is my little plate that I got from CB2. Here's the label. And I saw, I don't remember who, I'm sorry. If <laughs> I don't remember what YouTuber I was um, watching when they mentioned this and for watercolor and I thought you know what I'm gonna try that for like a ceramic palette because I've never tried that and I love it and I will be getting more so I'm gonna be using that today Um, so we're going to test that a little bit. Thank you. 
One quick thing that I just noticed is that the label white and the label titanium white have the same pigment. So they both have PW6. Um, so I put the white out and I'm going to put the titanium white out too just to see if there really is any kind of difference. Because I have a feeling there's not going to be. <laughs> So I actually don't have voice or sound for the rest of these clips, but I just wanted to give like a little overview of what I think of these products. So far, um, since, this, since this was filmed, I've actually used the sketchbook quite a bit, as well as the gouache paints, and I have to say I really like... I love the multimedia sketchbook, and I kind of knew I would because I had used the paper before, as I said earlier in this video. And I, the only complaint I have with the sketchbook is when it is opened and you're trying to work on a page, especially like the back side of a page, it does not really lay the flattest. I think when I get more towards the end of the sketchbook, it'll be a little easier to do that. But um, when you're first starting it, it's kind of difficult to work with. As far as the Arteza gouache, I have to say I was pretty impressed with the quality of these and as I'm swatching them out here in the video, you can see that they're very pigmented, which is something I was not expecting for like a student grade and student price range product. The range of colors was really nice. As I said before, as I was pulling out the colors, I actually don't know if that'll make the final cut, but if, if, it, if it doesn't, um, I was talking about how I wish there was a more phalo color blue or this, that the cerulean color that they include, um, which is there in the video, was more of a true cerulean or a bit warmer because it seemed to be just slightly different from their sky blue color and that was a little bit disappointing. I'm a really big cerulean blue person. I love cerulean blue, so I was really hoping to have some more, you know, more intense cerulean color in that. Other than that, I really enjoyed these paints. Um, they dry pretty well, they layer pretty well. I do recommend using them on actual watercolor paper though, over mixed media, unless unless you don't want to do more than a few layers and don't want to mess with it too much. I noticed um, during this portion here, I was using just a regular sketchbook that I got from Jerry's Artorama that has like a kind of cheap textured paper and I had done some watercolor sketches in it uh, which I know I posted on my Instagram before but I never tried gouache with it and I don't know what was getting into me but it actually worked pretty well the paper did warp as expected and it didn't really like me scrubbing with that synthetic brush but other than that it actually held the gouache pretty well the tape however it was not very friendly with <laughs> and I, I knew that when I was painting with it so just keep that in mind when you're working with gouache or watercolor, any kind of wet media in general. Um, the paper does make a huge difference. And back to the paints, as you can see here in the video, I was starting to do like a little landscape there with a little mountain. And that color combination was gorgeous. That is the Arteza Lilac and Burnt Umber mixed together. And it creates this gorgeous burgundy purpley color that I just loved and I will definitely use that combination again. Now I didn't explain this in the beginning of the video but on the right hand side I'm actually using a panel <laughs> that I put some palette paper on that you use for acrylics, oils, etc. And I decided to use that for my gouache instead of the palette that I had used to swatch because it was a little easier to clean up and I was just really messing around with the colors and because there was actually a time gap between this current video and the video before where I was watching the colors. And I accidentally, don't do this, I let the gouache dry on that ceramic palette and that was a horror to clean up. <laughs> it was terrible to clean. It, they Gouache, I'm learning slowly as I'm using them more and more. There are some big differences between the gouache and the watercolors that I'm used to using. Number one, they don't dry well on ceramic palettes or plastic palettes. They do crack, which is another reason why when you're using fresh gouache, you do not want to layer them too thickly because it will crack and compromise the, compromise the surface of your painting. 
So that kind of explains why I decided to use the palette paper, and that's probably what I will continue to be using for my gouache for a while, because it, to me, it's a lot cheaper, a lot easier to use just palette paper instead of working with a plastic palette and having to clean it off completely. At least with this method, I can leave it dry a little bit and just re-wet it and rework it if I wanted to. Working with fresh gouache, I have to say, is much more enjoyable than working with dry, dry gouache and trying to re-wet it. It does reactivate, but you don't get the same creamy consistency that you get with fresh gouache. Overall, if you're looking for a introductory gouache set like I was, I highly recommend the Arteza gouache. It was around $20 to buy a 24-pack of colors, and they arrived very quickly. And overall, I'm pretty happy with them. Are there a few things that I would change? Yes, and that's with a lot of things. But for me, for getting gouache to start a new practice of sketching and painting in a sketchbook and working with more opaque mediums other than just oils, um, it's fantastic. And you can't beat the price point. That's a big thing. That's why I was so impressed, I guess, with the quality of these because when you get student grade and inexpensive paints, you're not really going to expect much just because they are student grade. But these are really good. So yeah, I'm very happy with my purchase. Um, just to clarify, I was not sponsored but with this video, um, I bought this up with my own money um, for my own personal art practice, but I just thought I would share this with you guys because I know that this brand has become a big thing here on YouTube and they've been promoting a lot. And I'd love to try out more of their products. I I'm pleasantly surprised with this. So yeah, if you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, kind of reviewing products, I do. I have a lot of stuff that I would love to review. Um, that I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm a really big advocate for products that work well and that fit within a budget because as a college student now, I don't have as much funds to spend on fancy products. Um, I think I've come a long way with the quality of my pr the products that I use. Um, everybody starts out with student grade stuff. That's just how it works. But sometimes it's really nice to get stuff that is archival and professional quality. And... Although I'm not a gouache artist originally, um, and I can't attest personally to how these will contend with a professional artist grade gouache, I have to say I think I think they'd be pretty far up there. I mean, for the price, obviously you're not getting super 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 high quality, but for what I paid, I'm really impressed by them. I also wanted to bring up something that I was talking about in the beginning of this video about sketchbooks because that may be a little confusing if you come this far in the video and be like, oh, why didn't you talk about that? Well, I want to expand on that just a little bit. I've never been the type of artist that kept a sketchbook consistently, uh, meaning not even daily, but weekly drawings and having everything in one place um, and getting ideas out with a sketchbook. And there's a good reason for that. I was always... I'm a perfectionist, kind of, and it makes me very anxious and stressed out when I see this nice new sketchbook and, like, I want to make it pretty and perfect and, like, you see online on Instagram and such. And that's just not the reality of a sketchbook. And the older I've gotten and the more I've gotten into my art seriously um, as a career and through my school and everything, I've realized that the sketchbook is a tool that I need to learn how to use. And a sketchbook is an amazing place to express ideas in a non-committal way because nobody has to see your sketchbook. And that's that's one thing that I've really been trying to get in my head <laughs> about sketchbooks. So I that's was my main drive behind purchasing the multimedia sketchbook and um, doing this thing with a new medium, learning gouache and using a sketchbook at the same time, kind of combining those two things. And I think it's going to be good for me. So if you're the type of person that's like me and that is not a much of a sketchbook person in general just because you fear that perfection and you fear messing up, then I encourage you to try keeping a sketchbook this year. And I, I would love to do another video on this because I have a lot of opinions on this topic. But for now, that's kind of my explanation for this video and kind of the products that I chose and everything. And I think it'll be fun. 
Anyway, guys, that's going to conclude this video for today. If you enjoyed this kind of video with kind of a mix of um, regular footage and voiceover and little comments and kind of chattiness, um, let me know in the comments. And if you watched this whole video, thank you so much. You're awesome. And I hope to see you interact with me in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.